are Harry Stottle and his elder brother Barry. They'd never really gotten along. The two of them hadn't seen eye to eye on a great many things. They had a lot of disagreements and as time wore on, the distance between them grew greater and greater until neither one was really that interested in maintaining a relationship. And eventually, Harry got word that his elder brother Barry had died. And so Harry, he went along to attend Barry's wake. And of course, like any wake in Ireland, there was a lot of drinking. And of course, like any wake in Ireland, there was a vigil kept over Barry's body. The body couldn't be left alone at all, all through the wake, and the wake could last two days. And so there was always at least one person in the room with the body, and people would take it in shifts. Now Harry Stottle, he avoided his shift as long as he could, preferring to stay in the kitchen and imbibing as much as he could. But eventually, after a great many hours, long after the sun had set, he could avoid it no longer. There was nobody else to take their turn. And so Harry had to enter the room with his brother's corpse and take his turn at keeping vigil. It was then, of course, when he was sitting in the room alone with his dead brother, that the day of drinking caught up with Harry, and he was absolutely desperate for a piss. But he knew he couldn't leave the body alone. He called out for help, called out for someone to maybe give him just a moment to run to the toilet. But nobody answered. Whether they were all asleep or all pretending to sleep, it doesn't matter. Harry was left alone. Eventually, he became so desperate he decided, fuck it, I'll run to the toilet. So he runs off down the hall outside to the outhouse and he goes and he takes a piss. He comes back inside and he looks down at the table where his brother's body is laid in state. And he looks down at it and he sees that the body is a good foot shorter than it was before he left. That while his brother had had a fine thick head of hair, this body was completely bald. That while his brother had had a round, bulbous nose. This body had a small, pointed nose. This was not his brother's body. And Harry, he began to panic. He was thinking of what could he do? How could he hide from everyone else that he had abandoned his brother's body? And he thought to himself, the best thing to do was to destroy the evidence. So he took some of the sods of turf that were laid by the fire and he piled them around the body. He took a bottle of whiskey and he poured it over the body and the turf. And just as he was at the mantelpiece fumbling for a box of matches, he hears from behind him a thin cracked voice saying, what is it you're doing at all, Harry Stottle? And Harry stiffened. He stood up straight. And he said, This is a fairy body on the table, not the body of my brother. I'm going to burn it. And at that, that same thin, strained voice let out a horrible scream. Harry spun round to look at it, and he saw the body leap off the table and run out the door straight down the hallway. 
Harry, he didn't know what to do. He ran after it, chasing after it. It ran out the doorway, out into the garden. Harry ran after it and he tripped, sprawling on the ground. He picked himself up off the dirt and he looked behind him to see what he had tripped over. And there lying in the doorway was the corpse of his brother Barry, laying stiff with rigor mortis. So Harry, he picked up Barry's corpse, carried him inside and laid him on the table. He took all of the turf and he put it back by the fireplace. And he didn't speak a word of it to anyone, not for weeks, not for months. When people asked why there was whiskey on the table, he said he'd spilt it. But the incident wouldn't stop rattling around in his mind. He couldn't stop thinking about it. He couldn't stop wondering what happened. What was that creature that had taken the place of his brother's body? Eventually he went to an old wise woman and he told her what had happened. She sat down and she was silent for a while as if thinking. And she said that she had heard once when she was just a young girl from her grandmother. Long ago, the fairies didn't take children and replace them with changelings. Instead, they took the dying and the dead and left their own in their place. She didn't know why they used to do this. She didn't know why their habits had changed. That is what she had been told. And that is what had happened to the body of Barry's Tuffet. 